What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for checking out this video. So today I'm going to go over how I light my wedding receptions from the speeches to the first dances to the cake cutting. First off, I want to say thank you to Michael for suggesting this video. I hope this video helps you out and also I hope it helps out everyone else that is looking how to light wedding receptions or if you're looking for a different way to light them. Without further ado, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you're notified when I bring out new videos and now let's begin. So we'll first start off with the cake cutting lighting. When it is time for cake cutting, it is always in a weird corner or by the wall so it's usually hard to get some lighting over there so what I normally do is put an on-camera flash on my camera and this usually does the job I personally shoot with pro photo because of the reliability and the refresh rate is super quick and it doesn't skip a beat to miss those moments if you got lucky and the venue has really nice low white ceilings you'll be able to just put the flash on your camera shoot it straight up maybe a little bit angled if you want and back and that should create some nice bounce off the ceiling onto your couple. If you want even more diffused or softer light, throw on a diffusion. Profoto has these really nice magnetic accessories that go right onto the head, and this is the diffusion globe that produces really nice soft light. I've used this accessory without low white ceilings and it still comes out beautiful. Another option you have is to use a bounce card. Using this bounce card will bounce the light off of the card onto your couple. So again, if the venue does not have low white ceilings, you don't have to count on the ceiling. You can just use the bounce card and it'll still be soft enough to make it look nice. If you want even more diffusion and softer light, just throw on another diffusion on top. So Profoto is very expensive when it comes to lighting, so don't go out and buy a ton of stuff that you can't afford. When I first started, I used Godox and other third-party speed lights. Godox is a really great lighting company and they make a similar version to the A1 called the V1 which has the same exact accessories. It's definitely worth looking into because you don't want to just throw on a flash and do direct light because it'll be harsh and not very good looking. Depending on the venue of where I shot or where you're going to shoot, it was either the diffusion, the bounce card, or just bouncing off the ceiling. The last thing I have to say for the cake cutting lighting is just make sure it's nice and soft and not direct light. Your clients will be much happier when they see these really nice lit photos. So now we'll talk about the first dance lighting that I use for weddings. There are two main techniques that I use and it's totally depending on your style and sort of the venue. So the first style I do is a very dramatic, nice rim lighting. So this lighting technique will require you to have two stands, two speed lights, two grids, and two speed light holders. For the stands, I'm personally using the ICANN brand from b &H. These are air cushion stands, so in case your assistant drops it down too fast, it is cushioned by air. For the holders, I'm just using these generic umbrella holders and these work out just fine. For the lights, I'm using two Profoto A1s with 20 degree grids on them. Having these grids on the lights will reduce the spill of the light and just have it more direct onto the couple. So the way I set this lighting up is I do cross lighting. As you can see from the diagram right here, all it is is the two lights on the opposite ends facing each other. Of course, depending on the venue, the dance floor will make it easy because you just place it in the two corners. I put the light stands up pretty high, so I'm I'm about 6'3 and I put them about 6'5, 6'6. For the lights, I just put the grid on and put the lights down on a normal angle like that. And also when it's on the holder, they're tilted down just slightly. As you can see with the examples right here, it gives them a nice rim light behind them, silhouetting them, and then it fills them in with the other light. There's one thing that you do have to be careful about with this lighting, and that is it can cause really harsh shadows. This doesn't typically happen too much, but sometimes it does. So to compensate for that, what you can do is get another flash on camera, put a bounce card on to fill it in just a little bit. For exposure, I'm exposing for the ambient lighting so whether they have twinkle lights or other kind of lighting in there, I'm exposing for that and then I'll adjust the lighting power from the flash as needed. I would highly suggest this lighting technique if you want dramatic, nice lit photos. Whenever I send these final photos to my clients, they're always super happy and super pleased about it. So the second technique I have for you is super simple, soft lighting. So looking at this diagram right here, the lights are by each other, side by side, pointing right at the dance floor. Normally for this, I'm using two Pro Photo B10s, again, two light stands, and two translucent 40 inch umbrellas. Depending on the venue, the light stand height is gonna be different from venue to venue, but usually I have them up pretty high. The only drawback to this lighting is that if you're on the opposite side of them, they're not gonna be lit because you obviously you have your other two lights on the other side. Again, Again, that can be easily fixable by just throwing another camera flash on your camera and putting a bounce card on. Although this isn't my favorite technique, it still works almost at every venue and still turns out really nice. 
So now for speeches, this totally depends on the venue and where they're standing. If I can get whoever's doing speeches in the middle of the floor, I will do the same lighting as I do for first dances. It works so well because it isolates them from everything else and really makes them pop. But if the people that are giving speeches don't want to stand in the middle of the floor, which is totally understandable, usually bouncing off the ceiling, a bounce card, or diffusion works just fine. So there you go. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions regarding anything that I just talked about, comment below and I'll definitely get back to you. And if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you guys in my next video.